Hey everybody, AmpReparGuy.com, also HardbachElectronics.com, 203-892-4119. Please like, share, and subscribe. So I have like a chest infection. I'm getting medication today. I have a doctor's appointment, but I tried to get rid of it on my own, and it's not going away. So otherwise I feel okay, but I just, you know, gotta have to get rid of it. So um, it's been like two weeks. So working on the SB200 here. I'll show you what it needs. So someone changed the filter caps with mismatched ones. I will take that old board out, put our buck board in. Needs meter protection diodes, new meter lamp, new air variable cap on the uh, plate side since they're damaged. Plates are damaged. So someone made those hoop style parasitics, super long lead length. I'm gonna obviously pull all that out. I always do that anyway. Plate choke started to come unwound. I will fix that. I don't know why people paint the inside. I don't get that. So I'm going to flip it over and show you the back also. Be right back. See you soon. This is the bottom. Some really nasty solder work. Uh, this is coming out anyway. This is what's scary, okay? Look at this. This is the plate. This is the B positive right here. He has a lead going from the B positive over to this banana plug. And that's what it's called. Like a banana plug over here. Or some sort of pin plug. I don't even know if it's a banana plug, but it's going to the anyway, it's going to this female jack over here. That is nuts. Okay, I don't know. The gentleman said his father had set this up and he was using it. I, I don't know why you do that. I don't know if he was powering another amplifier off the plate of this amp or what, but that is scary. Please don't do that. Um, so you got this black one. It's connected back to the LC and he has a, a diode there. And here's the power cord. This is house wire. It's NM-B you know, it's rigid wire, and it's just going right through the hole with no grommet or anything. So I'm going to pull that out. I have a stock cord I'll put in here with a strain relief. I change these two capacitors. I already checked the SO239. It's good. I'll check the tolerance of other resistors, clean the rotary switches and everything. And I'm going to add an SO239. I get them from Max Gain Systems. I'm going to add one to the... Uh, you know, for the input, instead of the RCA, this one's damaged actually, so it has to be changed anyway. So I'm going to tighten up the ground lug, and I'm going to show you the back. There's some interesting stuff going on there too. Here's the back. This is the RL measure mod, I think. I'm going to take that out. Connect the cap right to the cathode connection. I'm going to Compress all the clips, clean the clips. He added uh, different grid loading resistors, or he has two in parallel, probably to get the 33 ohms or close to it. So I'll replace those. I always do that. Change the two mica caps. Clean the input rotor switch with the oxy gold, and. Uh, Go from there. Okay, right, so I'm going to get to work, and you can see the screwed up connector. So, hey, stay tuned. Please, again, like, share, and subscribe. Hey, everybody, Amp Repair Guy, and I am back. <clears throat> I uh, finally got some antibiotics a few days ago, so I'm feeling a lot better. I thought I could kick it on my own, but I think I had, like, laryngitis or something. They just did a um, phone appointment. They're so worried about COVID. So, I am done with the SB200. I'm going to test it. Well, I shouldn't jinx myself. Should be done. I'm going to test it. I'll do a video of it working. So, yeah, I do. Someone keeps bothering me about my bench. Yes, I do clean my bench, but I'm so busy here. I happen to be waiting on parts for those three amps over there. So, and I, the mailman just came with the part I needed for this. So while I was waiting, I cleaned my bench. So those boxes over there are for the brand new Pentalab tubes. And uh, I have more amps to get to, but when the parts come for those, I will get right on them. 
So I'm going to go over everything I did. This thing needed a lot of work. So I put the new Harbach board in. I put in reverse connected diodes to protect the meter movement. Put some heat shrink. Let me grab something to point with. Okay, so I added some heat shrink over the two wires, the secondary leads coming off the plate transformer, plate slash filament transformer, to protect them from the metal. So that's all in. I zip tied the wiring. New used plate tuner variable cap, new plate blocker. <clears throat> I sorry about that. I uh, Resuper glued the windings at the end of the choke. I wound them up real good, and then I super glued them. Brand new paras uh, I'm sorry, get yeah, brand new parasitic suppressors that I wound with two watt Allen Bradley <coughs> 51 ohm carbon copper resistors. Those are the best type you can use. Most people don't use them because they're not cheap, and I do not sell them unless I someone buys a master kit. I'll, I'll make parasitic suppressors, but I'm running low. I need to find more. So brand new Pentalab tubes, awesome company, awesome customer service, they're the only ones I recommend for 572's. So clean the band switch and also the other rotary switch over here, which adds, pad adds padding capacitance on 80 meters. Okay, so I think that's about it for the top. I'm going to show you the bottom and I will uh, I'll be right back. See you soon. Here's the bottom. Clean the TR relay. Change these two caps. Check the resistor values. Fix solder joints. Change the 33 ohm resistor over here. It was way out of tolerance. They use a 1 watt one. I always put a 2 watt in. I have a whole bunch of them. Put a new wire in to strap it for 240 zip tie the new cord where it comes in always make sure to solder the ground connection got rid of those two connectors over here one had full B positive on it the other one was connected to the LC I don't know what was going on there put this sticky thing in a strain relief for the B positive where it goes from the bottom of the hardbox board over to the plate choke the lead Oiled the fan motor. Clean the rotary switch over here with the oxy gold. That's about it. I'll show you the back. Okay, so I changed the grid loading caps with 33 ohm 2 watt ones. Also comes with smaller ones, but nothing wrong with having higher wattage ones. Changed the mica cap between the grid and ground. I changed the five, I think it's a five, yeah, five picoferric cap over here. The other one was damaged. Check resistor values. Clean the input rotary switch with deoxy gold. Installed an SO239. I get these from Alan Bond at Max Gain Systems. Really good people over there. You always want to check the tension on the output one. This is a pain to change if you ever have to change it. The, uh, the uh, directional coupler has to come out. So, um, the ground lug that was loose, so I tightened it up. Press the socket clips very carefully. I put deoxy gold on a set of dummy tubes on the pins and slid them in and out to clean the inside of the clips because over time you can end up with corrosion. So I'll show the parasitic suppressor. So I have one going on top, one going below. You always want the lead lengths as short as possible. I also replace the wire going to the choke. Uh, for the uh, pl you know the plate choke and uh, actually marked the side where the pin is you know so the customer has an easier time knowing which direction to put the tubes in because otherwise you need to look at the the back to see because two are for the filament one is the grid pin and the fourth one does nothing so you just want to make sure you don't put the two large pins and the two smaller holes because you force it in you'll end up compressing the clips uh, you know for the smaller pins and you don't want to do that because you can end up with a bad connection uh, for the grid pin and that's a big no-no so I reuse the customers plug 
and uh, this thing's good to go. So I'm going to put the cover on and I'm going to fire it up. First I got to call the customer and find out what band he wants a video of it working on. So stay tuned. Be right back. Please like, share, and subscribe. In the meantime, see you soon. Okay, we're back with the working amplifier. I'm going to show it working on 20 meters. I already did 80 and 40. That's where the customer wants to see it working. So radio set to roughly 50 watts. One kW slug, you know the drill, it's on PEP. I'll show the frequency after. Hey, key the amplifier of the foot pedal. Audio hello, 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 hello. Audio hello, 600 right there. Audio hello. Audio hello, hello, hello. Audio hello, hello, hello. Audio hello, hello, hello. It's flat. If the mess, you know, calibrate that, but relative power, play current, audio, hello, grid currents like nothing, not even moving, just the needle width, and I'll show the frequency. There we go. So if you need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. Phone number is 203-892-4119. Website's amprepairguy.com. Also, harbachelectronics.com. Lots more videos to come. And once I get a couple of these amps off the bench, I will get back on the other amplifier. <clears throat> I want to get that thing done because I have a guy who wants me to make another amp. So, so again, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. 203-892-4119, 73.